Well, the Me Too movement continues. It continues to bring down more and more people. As it does so, some are beginning to wonder and raise voices of dissent, warning that the innocent may be having their lives ruined. Last week, Hollywood star Liam Neeson warned that post-Weinstein backlash against sexual harassment is morphing into a witch hunt. Yes, um, there is a bit of a witch hunt happening. Too. In what sense? Uh, there's some people, famous people, being suddenly accused of touching some girl's knee or something, and suddenly they're being dropped from their program or something. Heather McDonald is a fellow at the Manhattan Institute and another Me Too skeptic, and she joins us tonight. Heather, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks, Decker. So where do you think this is going, the Me Too movement at this point? Well, it's going towards the disappearing of men. We're going to see a wave of new gender quotas throughout the economy on the assumption that if we don't already have proportional representation of men and women across workplaces in science and computing and in entertainment, it's because of gender patriarchies and, and uh, harassment, which is simply not the case. What we're seeing really, Tucker, is, is sexual liberation having a nervous breakdown. In the, before sexual liberation hit in the 1950s, you had a set of traditional norms that recognized this basic truth. Men and women are different. It's not social construction. Men and women have different biological drives. Their libidos are different. And we had a set of norms that restrained the male libido norms of gentlemanliness and courtesy and chivalry and we had a default for premarital sex for females that was no and that gave females the power to say yes but they didn't have to negotiate with the male libido at every instance of of uh, some drunken coupling sexual liberation threw that all out and said men and women should go mano a mano on the sexual battlefield they're equal in their desires equal in their responses to casual sex and it turns out, when you set the default at yes for premarital sex, a lot of women have a hard time negotiating a no. And instead of recognizing that we've sort of screwed up the default settings and are working against biology, women are blaming the patriarchy when the opposite is the case. Whatever its effects, it has not made women happier the last 50 years. I mean, there's been a, a longitudinal study on this, and American women have not become happier. I wonder if you destroy men or complete the destruction of men, they're, they're pretty close to being destroyed, I would say. How does it help women exactly? What will be the effect on women? I think you're going to see a lot of regrets. Uh, why aren't men courting me? Uh, and basically, civilization has been created by people with very powerful egos. It is of no relevance to me whether they were male or females. I want a meritocracy. I want people with drive to succeed. And if you have a, a rule that says powerful men uh, should be out of the picture, I think we are going to reach a civilizational stasis. Yeah. I mean, this has profound consequences. I don't fully understand all of them, but I can smell it. This is, this is a big deal. Heather, thank you for shedding some light on that. Thanks, Tucker. Well, there's all that war in Silicon Valley. Conservatives are accusing Twitter and Google of censorship because they're committing it, while Facebook has been accused of kowtowing to the Chinese Communist Party because it is. Mark Stein joins us in a minute to weigh in on the Valley's many crises. Stay tuned.